Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So we're set to have one of the hottest weeks on record. Now that's going to be a real stress on our gardens and on our plants. Now we've worked tirelessly at this stage and a lot of the plants are starting to bear fruit and we're starting to see those fruits of our labour. Now what we don't want to do is we don't want to lose our plants to this heat wave. Now what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about some of the strategies that I'm going to employ to try and protect my plants during the intense heat. Now there's some plants that are going to absolutely love the heat that's coming and these are things like chilies and aubergines these plants are actually going to love the heat so i'm not worried about these kind of things at all but because they are in containers one of the key things to these is going to be watering making sure that the pots are full of water especially with aubergines aubergines need a lot of water in their soil but i'm not too worried about the chilies because they will love the heat just like the aubergines but they actually prefer a sort of drier environment. If there's less water in the chili, it's not such a big worry, but if there's less water in the aubergines and things like tomatoes, that is a bit of a worry. One of my first tips is to make sure that you're concentrating your watering efforts on those plants that are gonna need it the most. So think about the plants that you're growing, think about which plants actually need a lot of water and which plants can go without. So early July is a time when we'd be planting out a lot of plants. So things like squashes, things like um, pumpkins and these sorts of plants, a lot of people are still planting these out at this time. Now when we're planting these things out, it's going to involve digging the soil, it's going to be involve turning things over. Now I'd advise keeping that digging to an absolute minimum. So I've got some actual weeds in this bed. So instead of digging them, I'm just going to pull as many weeds as I can. I don't want to disturb the soil and I don't want to bring that moist soil from underneath to the surface and allow the sun to turn it into dust and dry off all that moisture that's in the soil already. I've actually got some couch grass here. The way to tackle that is to actually dig it and trying to get as much of the root out as possible. Because there's going to be an extreme amount of heat, I'm not going to bother digging that because I don't want to expose that good soil to the air and to the sun and allow it to allow the carbon in that soil to oxidize. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. And once the heat waves over, then I want to tackle that couch grass. Now, as you can see with this soil here, it's got a little bit of mulch on it, but the mulch has, has oxidized. It's been taken into the ground. It's blown away. Whatever's happened to it has happened, but the soil has become quite exposed. A lot of the clay is exposed to the surface. What's going to happen is when that sun's beating down on this clay, it's just going to turn it into concrete. And that's one thing that I want to avoid. So I'm going to get another layer of mulch onto here. Weeds that I'm pulling out can form part of the mulch. That's not a problem at all because the sun's going to kill those weeds off completely for us. I'd normally say mulch after you've had a heavy rain. That way you lock the moisture in the soil. But in this circumstance, to try and preserve whatever moisture is in that soil already, I'm going to say mulch straight away. Get it protected and use whatever you can. I'm normally an advocate for heavy mulches. If compost is all you've got, use that to cover the soil, but try and keep the, make sure that the compost that you're using is a little bit moist instead of dusty like this. We've had this compost in this wheelbarrow because I made a mix that we're potting up with, but I don't want to lose the moisture and lose the nutrients in this soil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bag this up and I'm going to store it in, in plastic bags just so I can protect it as much as possible. So if you can, whenever you've got pots, make sure that there's some kind of saucer underneath it so you can retain that moisture. So when you're watering, the water's not going through the pot and draining straight off. So that's one of the things that I'm gonna be doing as well at the moment, just making sure that I've got as many saucers under the pots as possible. Where I haven't got a saucer, I'm gonna improvise. And worse comes to worse, what you could actually do is you could make a small hole and just put the, you know, put the plant pot into the soil, bury it, a couple of inches into the soil and that'll just lock you know that little clay bowl will act like um, a storage vessel for water so there's some plants in my container garden that are starting to struggle because of the heat so one of the things that i'm going to do is i'm going to take off some of these manky leaves that have dried up at the bottom and i'm going to get this just as, as soon as you feel the leaves you can feel that there's a lack of water in them so rather than just leave them in the sun or leave them where they are i'm going to move them to somewhere a bit more sheltered and when i lift it you can actually feel how light it is but before i move them somewhere else the way i'm going to give them a good water and the way i'm going to water them is i'm just going to dunk them in a bucket like this 
rather than just pour water through the top and let it drain out the bottom, I'm just going to leave it soaking for a few minutes and that way the soil is going to suck up as much moisture as possible. And in my container garden, I've got my courgettes and my beans and everything else, but the things that are likely to bolt, that are likely to struggle in the heat, I'm going to move from here. One of the things I've got here is my coriander. And rather than allow it to sit somewhere in full sun or somewhere where it's going to get stressed. So let's move it to the front of the house. We'll just leave it out here. And this is more of a north facing garden. It'll get enough sunlight that it needs but it won't get that scorching heat so my lettuce and all of those sorts of leafy plants they're getting moved to the front of the garden i know it's a bit of faff but i don't want to lose them i mean i want to keep them protected and i want to keep getting a harvest from those plants all the way through to the end of the season my grass here is getting a little bit long and some of it's actually going to seed that might actually work in benefit for me because what i'm not going to do is I'm not going to cut this grass right now. It'll just expose it to more stress from the sun. So I'm just going to leave it to grow. I know it might be a little bit uncomfortable or it might be a little bit unsightly, but it's going to be better than having a completely brown patch of soil. As you can see, my grass is very green compared to a lot of lawns. We're not watering this grass. We're just using a bits of gray water and we're using, uh, and, we're, and we're just being clever about the way we cut the grass. And if you do cut the grass, always cut the grass in the evening so you're not cut, exposing that freshly cut grass to loads and loads of sun beating down on it. You'll notice the way I've got my cabbages growing, I've got my gourds growing over the top. What I was hoping for was the gourds would have put on a bit more growth and they'd have covered this by now. But because they won't and we're going to get a lot of sun next week, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a piece of cloth over the top. If you've got a shade cloth, great. If you've got some kind of netting, fantastic. Now. I don't have any of that, so all I'm going to use is an old, do you know what, I'm going to use old clothes. I'm just going to hang a, a, probably an old bed sheet over the top, just so it gives it that little bit of protection from the beating sun. One of the key things about protecting all your young seedlings, if you've got seedlings that you're direct sowing right now, then one of the things that you're going to have to think about is watering them. On a normal day, I'd say water whenever it's convenient to you, but on a day where it's scorching hot, then I'd really recommend watering in the, you know, as late as possible. The sun's not taking the water out of the soil unnecessarily. The plant's getting a good, you know, it's getting a good amount of time to take up that moisture. You know, the water's settling into the root area and then it's got the whole day when it wakes up again to take up all that moisture. And it does take up moisture at night as well. So we've got some really young seedlings coming up here. We've got some really young seedlings coming up here and these are seedlings of uh, fenugreek and the thing I'm going to do with these is I'm going to give them a good water tonight. Young seedlings are really susceptible to getting, you know, they, they, they're really susceptible to dying from being exposed to too much sun. So what I will do is I'm going to set up a temporary, I'll probably just put up four posts and just put a piece of cloth over the top of them. Again, a bed sheet will do. So a real improvised gardening style, just to give our plants that bit of protection. So as we go into the greenhouse, we've got a, th a few things to think about in here. Now in my greenhouse, it's full of chilies, it's full of really tropical heat loving plants. But even though they're really he real heat loving plants, I look at this thermometer here, and today we've maxed out at 47 Celsius. Around 50 degrees C, a lot of plants will actually stop growing. So we want to make sure that uh, these plants are kept in optimal conditions. So if I do notice a really, really hot day, these plants that I've got in pots and containers, they're all going outside. They're going to be moved outside during the daytime when it's really hot. Towards the end of the day, when the sun's strength is gone, I'll bring them back into the greenhouse and I'll keep them in here. But in the greenhouse, ventilation is key. So make sure your doors are open. So in this greenhouse, we're fortunate enough to have some automatic window openers. So when the temperature rises in here and it gets too hot, the windows automatically open. But even in a greenhouse like this, this is glass, it gets, I mean, the maximum temperature today in here was 43 Celsius. It's still a little bit too hot for my liking. So I'll make sure that the windows are open in the morning before the sun you know, gets its full strength. If you don't have a lot of good ventilation, you know, if you don't have lots of windows that open and your greenhouse 
um, is getting a little bit too hot, one of the things you could do is put a few buckets of water in here and a couple of buckets of water in here would act like a little bit of a cooling system. Now where you can, try to conserve your water as well. Instead of trying to go for fresh water all the time, you know, go for grey water. And what we've got is we've always got a couple of buckets outside our back door. You know, we keep a bowl in the sink and any time the bowl fills up with water, we just use that dirty dish water to water our plants. That way we're not using fresh water and we're not wasting water in the garden. We're recycling the water that we've got. So, so these are all little tips that you can use to preserve your garden through this heat wave and preserve your plants and make sure that you're not wasting water as well. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. We also make videos on Patreon, so if you'd like to support our channel, yeah, do so. I'm going to leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi